or FDR. Now, there's also an update on the NAA propaganda story. That is the National Endowment of the Arts. I'm going to start with this. Let me show you two pieces of, uh, two pieces of work. First of all, uh, this is art. This is propaganda. Only healthy seeds must be sown. Check the seeds of hereditary disease and unfitness by eugenics. This one didn't come from Germany. This one, I think, came from England. What's the difference between these two? Well, they might be commissioned, both of them. But this would be commissioned by, you know, somebody who loves her. And this one is somebody who loves you so much it's the big government. They're here to help. That's the difference. Propaganda. Art. You really shouldn't mix the two. Back on August 6th, the NEA sent out an email inviting art groups to discuss the United We Serve initiative in a conference call. We told you and we played the tapes for you. The email came from NEA Communications Director Yossi Sargent. Sargent gained notoriety during the Obama campaign for his work getting the Hope Poster image widespread. Remember this? Well, on the August 10th conference call, another lady. Buffy, Buffy Wicks. She's the deputy director of the Office of Public Engagement. She um, addressed the group of artists by saying that she is going to come at you with specific asks. Michael Solznick, he comes in, he chimes in by urging the creation of art that would, quote, push the president and push this administration. Uh oh, it's no longer sounding like artists are creating this. Sargent adds that artists should pick up something, whether it's health care, education, or the environment. Well, those are the, quoting him, the four areas that the Corporation for National and Community Service has identified as areas of service. So what you have is basically an administration using your tax dollars to promote the administration. It's called propaganda. Remember? Not good. On September 24th, Yorsi Sargent, he resigned. He went away. Now there's an update on the story. Let's go to the person who recorded the phone call. Patrick Corielsch, he is a contributor to BigHollywood.com and filmmaker. Patrick, how are you? I'm good, Glenn. How are you? Good. Um, the guy who made the Hope poster, apparently after this conference call, then made this new poster. I love this propaganda. Clean energy for America. Isn't that, doesn't it make you feel good? <laughs> How American to have propaganda here. Um, tell me, let me go to the, the new news here of the meeting that happened in May of this year. Yes, May 12th. What happened? Um, it, it, well, basically, it was a, the first meeting that was at the White House uh, that we know of between uh, another group of, of uh, pro-Obama artists and, um, and the White House. It was a, a White House briefing. The interesting thing is, is you start to see this pattern uh, happening, where you basically have these, create, these artists and also what they're terming as creative organizers, uh, otherwise uh, called uh, political activists. Mm -hmm. And um, they, they get the same messages from the White House. Uh, you know, we want you guys to think about the arts uh, within health care and the environment. And uh, they al also actually uh, launched the, the idea of calling art as service, actually calling art as service. So uh, it's a key thing that uh, some legislation that passed a couple months before that. But the group gets together after this meeting, creates these uh, specific uh, uh, issue uh, strategy sessions. And one of the strategy sessions that uh, dealt with health care was led by the SEIU. And the, the whole uh, idea was the conclusion hold it, hold that they hold came out of. Hold sure. it just a second. Sure. SEIU, the uh, Service Employees International Union, right? Yes, what? yes. The Service Employees, what exactly that, this, do they have to do the, with artists? Exactly. This is the thing. They bring together these artistic groups uh, with these political activists. They throw political issues at them to discuss, knowing that policy advocacy is going to come out of it. It's just the only way that it happens. And so in this group, the conclusion that they came was that they needed to change the narrative for health care. They needed to uh, talk about, they needed to come up with points that countered the Republican talking points. It was actually stated uh, in their uh, briefing report uh, as the conclusion that they came out of this. So they were directing artists and, and uh, filmmakers to come up with stories that, uh, that changed the narrative on health care. So um, I found one of the, the, the pieces that, um, uh, that the SEIU actually uh, created a panel on July 9th 
to do this very thing. At their actually, headquarters. Uh, do, we have, do we have the video of this? This is at SEIU headquarters, right? Go ahead. Exactly. They beat Jim Crow. <laughs> We're now finding the descendants of Jim Crow. Well, I can refer to as James Crow Jr. Esquire. <laughs> Jennifer Crow, MD. And what that means is that the Crows are much more sophisticated. And so we're dealing with health care. The reality is that our people are literally dying in the streets of the richest country in the world. Okay. I want to spend some time on that. That should tell you an awful lot. We did a LexisNexis search uh, as well on when did people who are standing up against health care start to be called racist? Oh, you'll see next. Hang on. People will try to uh, make this uh, show about many, many things, but let me tell you right straight up. I'm not against health care. I'm not against the poor getting help. I am against a system that is all about special interest, and it started long ago, long before Barack Obama. I am against um, the lies and the deception. You want to have a conversation? Good. Let's sit down at the table. Have an honest conversation. But we can't do that because, well, we got something else going on. Let me show you this. This is art. This is propaganda, progressive propaganda. This was used as propaganda. The guy who made that also has made this. This is propaganda for clean energy for America. Finance with your dollars, by the way. That was commissioned after these guys got together on a conference call and said, hey, you know what we should do? We should use tax dollars to make propaganda. That's what happened. But they also had something else. There was a, um, there was a, uh, a meeting back in May that was organized by SEIU. Then, later, after that, they, uh, they had come up with an idea, a few ideas, on how to reframe the argument on health care. This is the first tape that we could find where this idea was um, thrown out into the workspace and into the public sphere. Listen carefully. What was their plan? They beat Jim Crow. <laughs> We're now finding the descendants of Jim Crow. What well, I can refer to as James Crow Jr. Esquire. <laughs> <laughs> or in this case, Jennifer Crow, MD. And what that means is that the Crows are much more sophisticated. And so we're dealing with health care. The reality is that our people are literally dying in the streets of the richest country in the world. Okay. I would like to ask for any, uh, uh, just show them to me, bring them to me. I, I'll show them on TV. I'll tell their story of all those people who are literally dying in the streets of the richest country in the world. Please show those pictures to me. Tell the stories. I will tell them on the air. Patrick Coriel, he is a contributor to BigHollywood.com and a filmmaker. He is the man who originally had the guts to be able to um, tape this conversation, grab it on his iPhone, and then share it with the world. Um, so what does this tell you? This conversation, sponsored at SEIU headquarters, what are they doing here? What are they laying out on health care? I think they're trying to, uh, to st say that the opposition has something to do with the segregation legacy. You know, and uh, just to be clear, the SEIU led the discussion about the health care reform at this meeting. But the meeting was actually organized by uh, someone that you're familiar with, the uh, former uh, communications director at the NEA, it's Yossi Sirjant. He was at the White House working with Buffy Wicks uh, in the Office of Public Engagement to bring this May 12th meeting together. Who's the so, boss you know, of the, Hang on this, just a second. Who's the boss yes. of Buffy, Buffy Wicks? Uh, it's uh, Valerie Jarrett. She, she, report, he report, she reports to Valerie Jarrett. So, I mean, it, you know, there's been this claim that the National Endowment for the Arts, uh, from the National Endowment for the Arts, that Yossi was this uh, person that that worked, uh, you know, un unauthorized and with no uh, with no authorization and, and unilaterally. But the White House was fully aware of what he was doing. He was working at the White House, creating meetings very similar to the one that I was on on August 10th. So this, any claim that he uh, was working on his own is just it's just not true. This is going on. The art is the art is being made, is it not? Yeah, yeah. The and messages the, are getting out there. I've sh I've shown a lot of stuff already on it. 
Okay. Um, we will have you back. Thanks for following this story. I appreciate your bravery on speaking out. Back in a second. Thanks, Glenn.